Good afternoon and welcome to St. Edward's on the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We remind you to practice social distancing during Mass, including the communion procession. Please use the center of each aisle as you come forward to receive communion in order to maintain social distancing from the people in the pews. Please stand. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the Son, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays, the moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. <clears throat> sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we open our hearts to the Lord and ask him for his mercy as we call upon our sins and ask for conversion of heart. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing. Break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed. For justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea. It shoots as far as the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays its waste, and the beast of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. O Lord God of hosts, restore us. If your face shines upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, 
but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When a vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain the, his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones. But they treated him in the same way, treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, "They will respect my son." But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, "This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance." They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to these tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at their proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you ever read in the scriptures, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, by the Lord has done this been, this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a common theme throughout the first reading of Isaiah, our psalm, and the gospel this weekend. They all involve a landowner and his vineyard. He is looking for a bountiful harvest of good fruit to produce the choicest wine. 
In the first reading, the planting of the harvest has not done well. The vineyard produced wild grapes. For those who enjoy a nice glass of wine, we understand that it takes the best fruit to produce the bottle that you come to enjoy. But you also know that if the bottle has, been, has not been sealed correctly, or if the cork dries out, the wine becomes vinegar, and it has gotten to the point where it is not fitting for anything except to throw it out. Our Psalm 80, which we had just sung in our response, refers to the Israelites who were brought out of Egypt. And after their struggle through 40 years in the desert, had finally arrived in a promised land, a place chosen by God for them to begin anew. However, their loyalty to God would not last. In the first reading, Isaiah is walking throughout Judea and Jerusalem warning them of his vision, and that the people of Judah and Jerusalem are in the line of the fire from God. Isaiah tells them the vineyard that was planted has produced wild grapes, and they will be overgrown. The walls will be trampled down and left for grazing in the vineyard to ruin. The produce has gotten to the point where it is thrown out. Isaiah's words have fallen on deaf ears, and for God it was time to move on to plant a new vineyard. In our gospel this weekend, Jesus is talking with the chief priests and the elders, the ones who we teach and instruct the people about God and the law of Moses. These were the ones who were placed, who placed so much emphasis on the letter of the law that they lost sight of the spirit of the law. Their emphasis on the law often created a burden and the hardships on the ones that they were responsible of leading. The message that Jesus had for the elders and chief priests was that they were misleading the people with their own agendas instead of the message that they were supposed to pass on. After listening to the gospel, it was very, very obvious who Jesus is referring to in the parable. Of course, there is Isaiah, who carried a message of God to the people of Jerusalem and Judea. His message was not always welcome. Then we have John the Baptist, who was sent to prepare the way for Jesus. His message was that as repentance. We know the outcome of, that he faced. He would be killed when sent to collect the harvest. And of course, he is referring to himself, the Son who would be sent to save what his father had started and handed over to be, to be kept safe. It makes me wonder what the chief priests and the elders may have been feeling at that moment. They were the tenants who were in charge of taking care of the vineyard when it came time to hand it back what they were put in charge. They became greedy with what they had, and they were not going to give it back, even if it meant killings for it. There's a simple question that we all need to ask ourselves. How often, how do we fit in these images of the vineyard? Are we doing what we can to ensure that only the best grapes grow in our vineyard? We have all heard the saying, don't shoot the messenger. Like the tenant in our gospel, they didn't want to hear what the servants came for. Do we welcome the servants and the messengers who are sent from the master of the vineyard? Or do we resent constructive guidance when it comes our way? St. Paul encouraged us in the letter to the Philippians to continue doing the things that are true, honorable, just, and pure. He reminds us that we are not to have anxiety, but through prayer, we can remain in the peace of God. This is a challenge that in our everyday lives, we have become complacent in our, daily, in our prayer life. Have we become cynical in our opinions and judgments, especially with what's going on in our city in the upcoming election? 
Do we allow the distractions of the world to get in the way of tending to the vineyards in our lives? It can be a real challenge, especially with all the things that has been going on. This weekend, after our 11 o'clock Mass, we will be baptizing three children. This is just the beginning of their growth as good fruit in the vineyard of God. There is much work that has to be done with getting their roots to grow. Of course, it starts with their families who have had the first role of producing good fruit. As the vine grows, others will be asked to assist in shaping them. That is where we all come in. It is through our prayers, example, and involvement in faith formation that we can help these children and their families on their journey. With leadership and guidance to Father Scott, our goal here at St. Edwards is to tend to the vineyard to produce a good harvest, not one of wild grapes, but one of good fruit. So when the master comes to collect his harvest, we all will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and enter into your father's joy. Now I would like to close with a psalm prayer that follows Psalm 80, and it comes when we do our liturgy of the hours in the morning. And it says, Lord God, eternal shepherd, you so tend your vineyard that you planted it and that it now extends the branches even to the farthest coast. Look down, up on your, look down on your church and come to help us. Help us to remain in your sun as branches on the vine that plant it firmly in your love. We may testify before the whole world to your great power working everywhere. Confess our faith, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now lift up our hearts to the Heavenly Father, showing Him our needs. For all believers everywhere, may we come together, produce fruit for the kingdom of God through acts of love, humility, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For citizens of the world, May we go in reverence for the sanctity of all human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for peace in body, mind, and soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those being baptized this weekend, Emma Janet Whalen, Oral Xavier Perkins, and Riley Harper Morris, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or near death, and for those who care for them, may they know the reality of God's love through this community support and prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray for Chuck Ruckriegel, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift these prayers and all the silent prayers of our hearts to you. We trust ever in your care and that you will grant us what we most need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. O oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service. Graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. 
For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Till you come again 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you wished to reconcile us, you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward, and, all, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. sins 
of the world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At 
this table the last shall be first what er is or que Dios es spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament with which we have, re which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. A couple of announcements in vision of our upcoming Feast of St. Edward. I think you all know there are available after Mass St. Edward Feast Day split the pot raffle tickets for $20 a piece. And also they're available at the uh, front office of the parish and of the school. Also part of that feast day weekend, which will be celebrated on uh, Sunday, October 18th. Uh, on the 18th, after the 10.30, after uh, starting at 10.30, up until 3 p.m., there'll be a drive-through taco lunch. Uh, same price as always, $10 uh, for a takeaway plate uh, with four tacos in each. More details of that in the bulletin. That's also a uh, part of our celebration of St. Edward. And then a couple of uh, civil responsibilities that come along with our living as, as good Christians. We're also good citizens. Uh, just a reminder that voter registration deadline in Kentucky is Monday, uh, October 5th at 4 p.m. So a uh, good thing to keep in mind. Um, Connected with that also, our, our Knights of Columbus here are doing a great job at helping us to, to vote, but vote also with, with uh, conscientiously, which also means forming our minds and our consciences, which doesn't mean the church will be involved in any kind of party politics. We don't believe in getting involved in that as a church, but as individuals only. And there's a beautiful website which helps to form give you principles, Catholic principles, which then you can then apply yourselves on who you're gonna vote for, but voting with, um, with education, so to speak. Faithfulcitizenship.org offers some really wonderful uh, materials. You can download some things there. And for those who are not too savvy at that, who are just not gonna do that, uh, the Knights of Columbus are also gonna offer us a limited number of copies of booklets um, regarding consciences for faithful citizenship. So lots of good things there to help us go be good Christian citizens. And last but not least, also another social responsibility, helping out and even saving lives in a very simple way. Uh, the Red Cross Blood Drive will be this Wednesday on October 14th from 3 to 7 p.m. at our gym. And you can look for more details about that also in the bulletin. And then last, but not least, as we were praying today, the spiritual communion prayer couldn't help but think for all of our followers online today, um, what a desire it is for all of us, whenever possible, all things considered, to, to be able to be together again. And I've heard many people say, Father, it's just not the same on television. I've heard other people say, Wow, they're pretty comfortable watching this on television. I kind of like this. <laughs> but I do want to encourage you to, th to think deeply. A spiritual communion is, is beautiful, but it's not the same as receiving our Lord sacramentally in the Eucharist. And uh, we look forward to that day when, when you feel that you'll be ready for that again. And if you have any questions about, I think we have a very conscientious community here when it comes to taking care of precautions against uh, contagion. So if you have any questions at home, there are many people here you could talk to, you could talk to me, uh, if that would help in any way. Uh, but I would encourage you as well, ask yourself, if you're going to a restaurant to eat, but you can't come to church to receive the Eucharist, your spiritual food, it's a question. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, obviously, but I'm gonna ask that question and um, for all of you who are here, here, sorry that you had to go through all the, <laughs> all that, but it's the only way to get a message to, to all of our, our wonderful friends at home. So with that final blessing, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.